A pleasant afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I, Yash Pandey, a student of BCom Honors, welcome you all to this intriguing webinar organized by KCC Institutes. Today, we are gathered here virtually to listen to one of the prominent speakers, Mr. Rohit Patnaik, an energy economist. Thank you, sir, for joining us today. Thank you, Yash. Our speaker for the day would talk about the topic, the OODA loop. OODA in the OODA loop is the abbreviation for observe, orient, decide, and act. It is a four-step approach to decision-making, which focuses on filtering available information, putting it in context, and quickly making the most appropriate decision out of it, while also keeping in mind that few further changes might be made when more data becomes available to us. We also have with us our director, Professor Dr. Bhavna Garwal, ma'am, who would now, I would now like to request her to kindly welcome and introduce our speaker to the audience. Thank you so much, Yash. Welcome. Uh, very good afternoon to one and all present here. First and foremost, on behalf of KCC Institutes, I welcome our honorable speaker, Mr. Rohit Patnayakji, who is going to discuss the OODA loop, an extremely new way of decision making. Very few uh, people like Mr. Patnayak is highly learned and a well-reputed economist who has also served with PM office. Sir, I'm highly confident that uh, your discussion uh, will highlight newer and deeper aspects of thinking and planning. Mr. Rohit Patnayak is an energy economist with over 17 years of experience in international energy companies. He is on the board of two startups and has served in the NSCS PMO office for five years and worked on energy, economics, and foreign policies. He is a postgraduate from King's College London. With this, I request Sir to kindly share his views. Over to you, Sir. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, wonderful uh, to be uh, you know, presenting with um, people who will implement and always good to uh, interact with you. It's always an, uh, a wonderful thing to share knowledge, especially with all your bright students. So I'll, I'll commence now. All right. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Sure. Right. Uh, this afternoon, can you all hear me? Yeah. 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 Me too. All right. Uh, uh, thank you for having me and wonderful. Now, um, to begin with, uh, this afternoon, I'm going to be speaking about the OODA loop game theory and causal loop. Now, the other two I'm just going to run over briefly, uh, the primary focus being on OODA loop. All of these tools, all the three are tools in economics and mathematics, which have profound implications on the way strategy is derived, be it business strategy, be it national strategy, or any, I mean, individual strategy also. All of these are basic tools to help the best possible outcomes to basically give you a winning strategy based on all the variables that you have. Now, uh, starting with, I'll, I'll first commence with OODA loop. The OODA loop is a very, very simplistic tool. Um, in fact, all of us use it. I mean, and most of us don't realize we actually use OODA loop in our day-to-day decision-making and everything actually. Now, um, basically OODA loop is not groundbreaking in the sense that, um, you know, uh, the insight has not been conceived before or something of that sort. What OODA loop does is it makes uh, implicit decisions more explicit, basically meaning that when you decide the way you act, the way you orient, all of that is streamlined. The objective of having it streamlined and into a decision-making thought process into an infrastructure is that you arrive at the best possible outcomes every time. Now, uh, also, uh, the in a nutshell, basically, OODA loop is more of a learning system. Now, uh, all of us un understand the one constant in all our lives, I mean, is change. Everything is changing. Change brings ambiguity. Change brings uncertainty. Now, and in an ambiguous and uncertain environment, having perspective, having knowing what, what is the right thing to do is extremely important because that is the difference between winning or losing. It's as simple as that. Now, uh, I, I mean, we all know last year, you know, uh, because of COVID, uh, this was a unknown variable. I mean, it led to massive disruptions. Uh, rest, as they say, is history. Uh, hopefully we're getting out of uh, the worst of it. But at that point, 
um, you know, at the highest office, be it at the prime minister's office, the variables were very, very limited. I mean, the and, and they were very conflicting also. Some said this would go on. Some said, you know, it's it's more a seasonal thing, uh, similar to what you had in SARS. So you had multiple points. And at that point, the decision taken for the lockdown and subsequent, all of this was based on the available decision, based on the existing decision at that point of time. So what, what this is, is basically this particular tool is used even in, be it in national security, I mean, at the highest levels, and it's also used in businesses. Now, if you look at it, of all the companies which progress, despite you know the economy taking a massive hit, look at one sector's thrive in this particular thing. This is the tech sector, like Zoom. I mean, if any, uh, you know, the stock for Zoom is hundreds of percent. It's it's increased. Any, I mean, all your social media companies, they really, you know, had the market cap is just shot through the roof. But as a traditional, most of your brick and mortar companies, they've done really badly because the overall macro picture has been bad. Now, coming on to uh, coming back to the loop, uh, a very quick uh, brief. Uda loop was uh, it was conceived in 1960 by an uh, American fighter pilot known as John Boyd. Now, this started being used uh, basically, um, you know, in uh, the first, first instance of it was basically in warfare. From there on, it got translated into business. Now, even, even in the Indian military, um, you know, this thing is ingrained into them. This ODA loop is something they all do it subconsciously it's part of the second nature when they you know when they take decision making because in the military there's something known as a fog of war you don't have a hundred percent variables you don't have you know it's not a clear thing decision making has to be instant because you can't wait for all the right variables to be perfect to take a decision within the available thing they take you know a decision what they think is the best possible outcome what would, which is winning so then they act accordingly to that now uh, I'll, I'll give you a brief uh, on what was the thought process there were three particular fundamentals uh, behind john boyd's ooda loop uh, i've just uh, written I'll, I'll just uh, read out for you the first one is uh, godel's incompetence uh, incompleteness theorem godel's incompleteness theorem is basically a logical model of reality in incomplete and passive inconsistency okay then the second one is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Most of you all would have read that in physics. This principle shows that we cannot simultaneously fix or determine the velocity and position of a particle or body. We measure coordinates or movements of these particles, but not both. Now, what Boyd basically was trying to infer from this is that basically what happens is when you start focusing on one particular thing, it's, it's literally like a tunnel vision. You know, you just focused on one particular thing that you start losing the other focus on the other variables. So that's something we have to be very careful about that you just don't go into a tunnel vision matrix that you're just looking at one thing and you're not looking at the complete picture because the complete picture, the environment affects decision-making. That's very, very important to look at. Now, the third final point is the second law of thermodynamics, again, from physics, uh, being a fighter pilot, yes, uh, you know, that was expected. Uh, individuals that don't communicate this this is very important for all of us especially for students i think this 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 particular thing is very nice because what it says is individuals or organizations that don't communicate with the outside world by getting new information about the environment or creating new mental nodes models you know they start having a closed uh, chapter i mean basically what it means is like as students say in kcc you know you'll read up on various um, you know theories like common students read up about economics, then you you know you all learn it's interdisciplinary approach. You know, uh, some of you all uh, learn various things. Sometimes you all learn uh, you know like like some of you all are learning this OODA loop. Somebody would lo learn about law. All the interdisciplinary play has a very very good effect in decision making because what it does is it enables you to have a wider ambit, a wider surface area of thought processes to filter in while coming at the right decision. All of these helps. That is why when, you know, the advantage of being in, say, um, in KCC is that you're approached, you know, you, your teachers expose you to various thoughts, various processes, various models. And each of this initially, you know, to you, frankly, right now, uh, you, you know, you probably read it and then you forget about it, but 
over a period of time, you'll, you'll realize that it impacts your decision making, your thought process, all of that is molded. You may not realize it now, but a few years down the line, you know, as when you all join the workforce, when you're working, these little thought processes that interlinking, that is going to be very, very important. Interlinking, the ability to interlink is going to be very critical in decision making. All of y'all, irrespective of whether you, you know, go into law, whether you go into consulting, whether you go into accounting, the ability to interlink is the one which will ensure, which will help you rise. That's very, very important. The ability to interconnect the dots. Now, coming back uh, to the uh, OODA loop, uh, let me come back and explain each and every step. I mean, most of y'all would be aware. How well, I'll just quickly uh, run you through it. Now, the observation phase is about gathering information or data. You're trying to understand a fluid situation in both external and internal environments. You try to understand your own data. Very important, your competitor strategy, because why competitors? Why is it important to understand your competitor strategy is because it is all about winning. The primary objective of doing the OODA loop is the faster you do the loops, the faster you disrupt the competitor's process. So it's all in, in the end, be it you know, uh, business, be it in war, be it in national security, anything or individual individual uh, you know choices also you make decision making the faster you go through all this with better judgment the faster you come at the right conclusions now you can gather endless amounts of data but speed is of essence so you're left with what is available even if it's incomplete always remember that as i said um, you know there's something known as a fog of war in in military strategy this is known as fog of war that basically means that you never ever truly have the entire picture at, because of fluidity of the environment. So with whatever is the best possible uh, available data at that point, you take a decision, you process it, and as and when new data emerges, you again go back, revise your decision, and again take another step. Now the orientation phase. Uh, the orientation phase is the most important phase in the OODA loop. This is the single phase that will decide the success or the failure of OODA loop because this is interconnected to all the other phases. Now the orient phase is about analyzing and making sense of the data you've assimilated. Now at the end of the stage, you should understand what your options are. The objective is to spot errors and gaps in your thinking. The sooner you can spot a gap, the sooner you can take advantage. Now. Why is this a very critical phase for everybody is because see, past experience, cultural uh, experience, that, I mean, you know, your traditions, analysis, all of these plays, I mean, sociology, psychology, all of this plays a role in this. How say um, uh, an Indian would react to a situation would be very different to how a Japanese would attract each or an American would uh, approach a situation, each one. That is why culture plays a very key role in decision-making also. This is a very, very important step. And, you know, understanding cultures, that is why when it's, it's um, you know, each business also has a culture, a Tata's culture, the work environment in a Tata company, a Tata group company would be absolutely different from say a work culture in a Reliance uh, group company. So understanding the work culture of each company also helps you potentially anticipate what the likely decisions. This will be very useful. As in when you go up the uh, chain, um, you know, in your offices and this and that, this, this is going to be very useful too. Now, after that, the next slide. Uh, then decision. The previous steps you would have generated plans on how to proceed. In this step, you choose which option you're going to pursue. The choice you make on the plan of action will be the one that best helps you reach the objective. Now, Decide and act is basically what I call leadership positions. The orientation is at the analyst position, but decide and act is primarily leadership decisions. It's, it's for the leadership or the head of the company or the head of the team at that point to take a call on based on what his team has provided him or what input he had given at the you know uh, previous stages, previous two stages. And that is what decide and act, in fact, are totally dependent on the orientation stage. The act is the final part of the loop. All it does is, you know, you finally justify whether uh, you've made the right calls and then 
uh, then you move on from the uh, what do you call the planning stage to the execution stage. So that hence you complete one loop. If it doesn't work out in the marketplace, instantly you go back to the drawing board. Again, you go back and do the loop again to rectify it. Now, let's uh, quickly let me take you you know uh, to a case study. Very uh, brief one. Now, uh, all of y'all uh, probably use Netflix now. I mean, it's it's uh, practically common everywhere. Now, uh, this Netflix. Why why I bring out the Netflix uh, uh, example is that uh, what had happened is uh, uh, the one of the promoters. I mean, the the people who started Netflix. He actually uh, was a very strong. Uh, exponent of OODA loop theory. I mean, he used this uh, theory a lot. He used um, this tool a lot in his decision making because he was from the armed forces background. So he used this. And uh, what had happened is uh, way back in 2002, uh, they had set up the company. By then, uh, most of y'all or, or people who've um, stayed overseas, I'll tell you what Blockbuster is. Block, block, Blockbuster was a huge shop. I mean, you could come in, rent uh, DVDs. And then in the evening, on the next day, you could come and return. It was like basically a DVD thing where you came, rented DVDs, you could uh, rent uh, PlayStation games, all, all of that. That's what Blockbuster basically was. Uh, you came in, picked up your DVD, and then you came and dropped it back the next day. That's sort of, you could rent place. Now, what Netflix did is Netflix observed in 2002 that internet is becoming important. And most importantly, Apart from internet, it was the speed, the broadband speeds were picking up, which allowed streaming of videos. That was a very, very important uh, you know, step. And this is where these guys sat in, they understood the environment. First, what the promoters came in, they sat, they understood the environment, and they figured out that they took a call that, look, because net speeds are increasing, broadband connectivity is increasing, the way business is being done is going to change. So what did they do? They started, Netflix and another, luckily at that point of time, uh, just a few years after they had uh, uh, started uh, is when Google purchased YouTube uh, for, so that convinced them that the first uh, decision of starting uh, the OODA loop when they ran it through, they, it basically reinforced, they went back again, it reinforced that the first decision, the first loop where we decided to set this up and go exclusively was absolutely correct. So what they did is they started going and started reinforcing. At that point of time, uh, there's this famous analogy uh, where, uh, you know, uh, Blockbuster was, um, yeah, uh, I think almost uh, it, it had uh, hundreds of millions of uh, dollars in revenue. And uh, it could have snapped up Netflix at that point of time uh, at, for 50 million. That's a value. Today, uh, Netflix is over 200 billion. I mean, that's a market cap of that. Now, uh, the um, basic thing then after that is what did they do? The orientation is where they move into the strategy. I mean, where the uh, key decision making was. And then they realized initially that the market really wasn't totally ready for uh, streaming videos, but because the broadband connectivity was increasing, it was in a perfect position. So what did they do? First, they started digitizing their own in-house uh, DVDs, all of that, the entire catalog was getting digitized. And then gradually, as and when, you know, net connectivity started, they started giving out options and they also had to get the pricing right. Now, either they could lower the price totally, capture the market. I mean, obviously, these are very uh, simple uh, price economics uh, to beat Blockbuster and minus the hassle of returning it because, you know, anybody with a laptop and this, uh, you know, ease of usage was there. Then apart from that, at the same time, uh, Netflix had a very important decision to make. They realized that we cannot forever sustain just buying, I mean, you know, uh, taking exclusive rights of uh, companies. We needed to get into the content business because if you own content, content is the king. And so at that point of time, way back, almost a decade back, Netflix decided that we are going to get into our own content business. And they were small. I, I mean, look at the clarity of vision they had. They were still a small company. They were still you know, probably 20, 30 people, whatever. But the fact is by then uh, the idea was, uh, you know, all of this was pretty much formalized in the head. They were just waiting for the right time, the opportune environment. They had identified the perception of the market was spot on. And that is why today, I mean, Netflix is what it is and Blockbuster's uh, bankrupt. It's, it's, uh, it went, it's gone into bankruptcy. 
now because of uh, you know the success of netflix any any particular thing you will have copycat uh, people you've got amazon obviously with huge uh, you know watches coming with amazon prime uh, there are a lot of other companies which are now trying to move in but basically what it says is sometimes um, you know it you don't have to have huge watches for huge amount of money sometimes like most of y'all uh you know will join a couple of students some 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 of you all might have a brilliant idea and you know if the market tells you if if the general thinking is that no this is not going to happen but if in your head if you have clarity that no the environment is changing and my business plan will survive the change then you should go ahead with it because once you stick once once you do your ooda loop once you are absolutely convinced doing the ooda loop that you know you your interpretation of the environment your interpretation of the business uh, you know the way the business climate is changing uh, your analysis of the trends is correct then your spot on it will help you tremendously now uh, uh, moving on to the next one i'll just uh, uh, geo versus arcom now um, I, i don't want to get into <laughs> uh, uh, things but uh, we all know that um, most of us uh, would know that um, you know uh, the uh, ambani uh, when the empire was split uh, the uh, communications uh, reliance com was something uh, the elder ambani uh, reliance uh, he had started i mean he was keen on acquiring but it uh, you know in the split it went to his brother now how, however just look at the clarity he always knew that this this had tremendous potential and he just waited for the right time obviously they had a no compete clause uh, in that uh, you know settlement papers they There was a no compete clause, meaning they couldn't enter each other's for a few years. That you know the others' domains. So very smartly, what what the elder Ambani did is he had assembled a group of people way back, almost uh, in two thousand seven onwards. It's a, a much before that, two thousand five. They had assembled a group of people. They done. They realized that look, internet connectivity in India is where the future is. Broadband connectivity is where the future is. so what they did is first they uh, set up in a company and then uh, that company won the rights to bid 22 circles i mean broadband spectrum entirely across india and then after that in 2007 there was a f- very famous judgment where they started offering a cellular service uh, volt and uh, generally the others um, they used a uh, different technology compared to others then there was you know uh, it finally got settled in the courts that they were right basically meaning that their interpretation or the way they had approached their homework when they had done it through the uda i mean you know the orientation was spot on the way the analysis the guessing the ability to perceive the change in the market the regulatory environment everything was spot on so the orientation towards moving in was spot on and the rest as they say is history they invested they took a very calculated gamble because uh, obviously look the advantage of that is they had huge amounts of uh, money i mean obviously but um, uh, the fact is it was a gamble i mean to go cross spreading broadband they almost laid 2000 of uh, 2 lakh 50000 kilometers of fiber optics in india now what it basically meant all of this is uh, come back if you look look at in the last one year everything has come back to them i mean you know uh, they start because of the domination they had in the distribution network they owned the distribution network then they moved into content they owned network 18 they bought a lot of news channels so that they owned the content also and then finally what what because they were in the, and uh, they already had uh, reliance retail i mean the entire ecosystem was set up what it meant is they were very very um, you know lucrative for foreign investors and uh, last year that is why they sold off um, you know 27 23% for 152056 crores that's almost 20 billion so their their decision making was spot on because of this now the last quick study i wanted to do is serum institute all of us are aware of the risk uh, taken by serum institute uh, you know obviously now they're getting plaudits everywhere the country is getting plaudits because of serum institute but if you put yourself in serum institute sh- shoe way back in um, you know feb and march when they were tying up with astrazeneca they basically went out and tied up with five different people at that point of time um, you know there was no clarity would it work is it going to take months is it going to take years number one number two 
who's going to put in uh, because uh, please understand that if a, a vaccine has a very short like any product it has a short shelf life and if um, you know it didn't work out it was going to burn his bottom line it, it's as simple as that he may he, he was a billionaire nobody no, i mean you know that enabled him to take risk but it was a huge risk because if if it would have gone the other way uh, serum would have gone bankrupt that was a calculated risk taken by serum institute they went into five different vaccines they enhanced the production capacity and also the the best part is you know um, he produced five different variants despite not knowing it was a calculated gamble that if you know one out of five fails or if two out of five fails you basically are going to burn hundreds of crores or thousands of crores because you've already produced that vials of vaccine which cannot be sold but that was a very calculated decision taken and he understood that you know there is a wider game plan for the common good and most important is the ability to manufacture it cheaply and quality product that that is what uh, separated them now because of all these decisions they had taken plus they invested their own in their own serum they, they are doing one a nasal va- uh, variant which uh, should come out in another few months uh, this is their own in house thing but the fact is the ability to take was a huge calculated risk all of this would have look at the orientation stage can you understand the matrix is all based at that point the information was incomplete they weren't even sure whether it is going to you know work that was a calculated risk get the orientation if you look at the psychology the way they, they were risk takers no doubt it is because of that risk taking ability that they were able to bring serum to its uh, state where it was so all of these uh, psychological factors these helped then the, luckily also one advantage is they knew that the government would rely on them so that was an, also a ca- very calculated risk they had to take because they weren't sure what if the government tomorrow says no we are not going to buy this at this thing then they are left with you know huge amounts of stock but luckily it was a brilliant uh, classic uh, you know uh, tactic i mean uh, the way they enhanced i mean the way they played this uh, loop actually is a wonderful st- story and the rest as they say is uh, success because of the success also it's had a, a domino effect on the national uh, image also because all, all of you all would have uh, seen uh, you know india's vaccine diplomacy uh, it's it's really reaped tremendous benefits for india in in terms of soft power um, you, you know you even have the president it's gone right up to brazil the fact is you know this 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 is soft power which really is very difficult to quantify but it it has tremendous value it's enhanced stature just because of that one company's decision to take a huge risk right so with this uh, basically now i'll i'll uh, come back to the topic on uda most of you all take decisions uda decisions like even when you go shopping you know whether uh, you want to take a, you know a blue shirt a white shirt a green shirt whatever color there are certain decisions all of you all go through these are little little loops you take you look at various uh, you know what shirt is in season what company i mean you know uh, in pricing these all these little little decisions you'll actually subconsciously take it but you don't realize then when you put it in this it becomes clear that all of you all take other decisions in your day to day life similarly when you tomorrow when you move on um, you know when you go into consulting firms and all of these these particular things when when you all will be part of teams and when you will work on various strategies or consulting strategies or even when you go to law firms this particular thing this is a very simple tool but if you actually do it it helps crystallize a lot of thought into your thing it will help you in your own decision making just to start i mean there's a very the reason why i said this is a very easy to use tool is that you anybody can i mean all in fact you just become better with practice that's it it's it's just four simple steps you become better with practice and that's it and and it crystallizes more important this the quality of the output in the end say suppose thing you work tomorrow and uh, any of the major consulting firms you do a case study or uh, more important your advice to advise on a company planning to enter x market or y market and when you do all this or you know should we enter this segment and you are asked to do a consulting study and when you run it through an uda loop and then when you give the final product the quality shows because what happens is it this uda loop helps you crystallize your own thought so when you you, you know you, your own thought is very clear 
it shows in the uh, final report that you all put up to wh whoever you do. Or even if you become entrepreneurs, this is a very critical tool which will help you. Now, moving on to the next uh, thing, game theory. Now, uh, game theory is uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, I, I remember when uh, we went to the class, we were all asked to watch uh, A Beautiful Mind. I mean, there's a movie um, based on the person who actually created game theory, John Nash, who was a mathematician in Yale. And uh, for those of you all who aren't very familiar, just watch it on uh, uh, Netflix or what, uh, game. I mean, it's called A Beautiful Mind. It's an Oscar winning movie. Just watch it and it's sometimes it's nice to also watch <laughs> movies with subjects it just helps uh, uh, raise interest now uh, game theory basically is that uh, the applicability of game theory is immense um, there is um, it is used every day in business in fact uh, for those of you all who might go into mckinsey and all that uh, they use quite a bit of it actually uh, in in all the consulting and this and that and uh, further on, um, game theory also is used. It's very important from a national security perspective also. And I'll just give you a brief in a while uh, how, apart from UDA, I mean, this is also uh, very important. Uh, now, basically, uh, game theory follows uh, certain rules. Uh, one, uh, that um, uh, basically there should be players. I mean, the various parties are known as players. Then there's strategy and everything has a playoff and they abide by rules there are certain rules now game theory can be described as a mathematical study of decision making of strategy and conflict in social situations companies selling consumer goods use game theory to predict how the competitors and customers would react in a price war the game is an interaction between two or more parties and relies on people acting rationally knowing the boundaries of the game and knowing that the other party is equally cognizant of the rules these strategic interactions from the crux of game theory. Now, uh, most of y'all uh, would have uh, heard the famous prisoner's dilemma. I'll, I'll just give you a very quick uh, rundown. Suppose think uh, there are uh, two prisoners, prisoner X and prisoner Y. Now, both have been caught for a crime and both are kept in two separate uh, cells. I mean, thieves, basically, uh, two thieves have been caught, X and Y. Now, they are kept in two separate cells and they are interrogated separately. Now the policeman and the uh, DA, I mean, uh, the policeman gives them a choice that one, if either you confess or you rat out the other person, you become a prover and you say, you know, you confess to your thing and we let you off easily. Or if you don't confess, both of y'all get into trouble. Now, being thieves, there's no honor among thieves. I mean, we, we all know that. So being thieves, ideally the best situation looking at it would be not confessing both of them not confessing but this never happens because you're not sure you know since both of you are kept separately you're not sure whether you know the other thief is uh, you know ratted out on you or not so what happens is what is the ideal situation the ideal situation would be that one you know i confess and uh, you know Hopefully he doesn't confess. So because I turned approver, I let go. I mean, I'm let go with zero years and he has to serve the remainder of five years. This is the ideal situation. However, as per game theory, what is rational? What, what both of the thieves are likely to do rationally is that both of them are likely to rat out on each other. They're going to say, nay, he didn't. I mean, the crime, he committed the crime, he committed the crime. So that is the likely outcome of this, meaning that both of them are going to serve two years and after that they'll be let out. Rather than the best outcome, what, you know, sitting outside, you would say is both not ratting each other out, but because both of them cannot take the risk that, oh, you know, can I take a risk that he will not rat out or, you know, he rats out and I'm, I'm, I go in for five years. So both of them, standard thing is rationally they behave, is that both of them, uh, turn approvers and basically, uh, you know, they say that he's committed the crime, this is how it was done and both of them get two years and do it. Now, this is what is known as a national, a, sorry, national equilibrium. A Nash equilibrium is where a player in a game has found it when they make the choice that leaves them better off, no matter what their opponent decides to do. This is what a classic 
Nash equilibrium is in in simple parlance. There is a mathematical thing, but in in simple equation, is that it is basically what is the best outcome of yours, irrespective of what the other person would do. This is your best outcome. So this is what is your best outcome. Now. Uh, also, another thing is how game theory is used in national uh, security. It's it's uh, it's a common tool. Um, most of y'all would uh, probably be aware. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if most of y'all would be familiar with the term mutually assured destruction. Now, mutually assured, uh, see, there are two nuclear states. Uh, what are the chances of them using nukes or not using nukes? Using game theory. Two things emerge. One, it's not in either's interest to use the nuke. B, it's also not in either's interest to give up the nukes. So what happens is it, it basically is a stalemate. So this is what game theory summarizes. So this is why, and, and there are similar other role plays. There are multiple scenarios you can do on various things on how your adversary would uh, you know react to this situation or that situation at, at the national level. This is how you also strategize when you do national security. And similarly, this is done in, uh, what do you call it? consumers, um, uh, I mean, a lot of marketing companies, everybody does it actually, everybody, uh, because it's a very useful tool. Now, uh, last, I mean, I'm, the reason I'm, I'm quickly skirting through game theory and this is because, uh, as, as I mentioned in the OODA loop, sometimes what happens is when there's too much of an overload, right, in, in the first orientation thing, if there's too much of overload of information, you miss out. So my primary focus is that first look at OODA loop, then after the game, it's, it's just a, you know, a fresh, I mean, sort of a, a refresher course or something like that sort of game theory. And in uh, causal loop, wh why I bought these two is because all the three are tools which are very useful when you do strategy. It helps you uh, formalize, crystallize ideas, be it in the, you know, be it in business, be it in the uh, national security level. Now, there's finally this. This is something known as causal loop. I uh, I'm not sure how many of y'all would have used it, um, but uh, the causal loop diagram is a foundational tool used in system dynamics, a method of analysis used to develop and understand complex systems. Now, causal loop can be used to understand six sigma systems. Most of y'all would be familiar with six sigma. I'm, I'm, I'm sure um, you know. So this is a, a very useful tool while understanding, while laying out a picture of Six Sigma. Now from a national, uh, I mean, from a strategic perspective, it's, 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 it's very good to understand, uh, supposing you wanna understand insurgencies, what are the cause, what is the effect, all of these, these, these are very good because in a causal loop diagram, it brings out systematic feedback and it shows you various, how each variable interacts with the other. I'll just give you a basic example. I'm not going to go too much uh, in depth with it. This is a wonderful example, uh, which was done on uh, understanding, um, you know, the Afghan insurgency. If you just have a look at this, just look at all the variables and the interplay, this will give you an idea. I mean, the reason I'm not going too much into this is because, you know, this, this requires a couple of classes for you all to understand how to do a cause and loop. But, I just wanted you all to understand that, you know, this is also a tool which can be used. So tomorrow, uh, for those of y'all who will, your teachers will uh, obviously go into detail on, you know, uh, they'll teach you how to do cause and loop diagrams. But if y'all can do this, this is very, very perfect, especially if supposing you're gonna do a, you know, um, campaign to uh, set up a new, you know, um, what do you call, uh, launch some new product in India, I mean, you know, and then all the multiple variables, that's market size, uh, you know, how the competitors play, what are the variables, uh, infrastructure, all of these things you can incorporate into this. And if you actually have a look at it, it's, it's very comprehensive. It takes days and days to actually, I mean, uh, if it's a team effort, okay, it'll take a day, but um, you know, you get a very good picture. I mean, that entire picture in one single sheet, it's, it's, but it's uh, useful from that perspective, all right? So uh, that brings up, uh, uh, you know, uh, me to the end of everything. And thank you so much. Uh, can we, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, as decision making is our day-to-day -day life subject. So we have lots of questions uh, with our, from our audience. So with continuing, uh, Pooja Jain and Yash Pandey will take the charge. They are moderator of this webinar. So they will ask questions which have been 
raised by our audience so first of all i'll i'll pass on to pooja jain pooja thank you so much sir for the information you shared with us that was really helpful for our future decision making and uh, uh, so i would like to ask questions on behalf of our viewers yes please so our first question would be how co uh, corporate culture and psychology affect our ability to orient information see as as i um, said this is a very good question and uh, see all of you all are going to work in various corporates now uh, currently all of you all have learned the same subject but when you move in as i said each company has its own corporate culture right each company you learn a lot every company some of you all will say uh, join and also it depends what sector you all join in some of you all will join consulting some of you all will join say um, you know manufacturing some of you all will join hospitality but the arrays are the same everywhere what happens is this ooda loop is a thing which will help you in every sector it is better because see each as i said uh, in the orientation part of the ooda loop if you look at it the uh, psychology and the social i mean the interaction that plays a very key role so as i mentioned how suppose think you join uh, you know reliance your friend your best friend joins startup Six months down the line, I give both of you all a solution. Your solution, I mean, will be pretty similar, but there'll be a variance the way you all approach it, because th that is the company's culture. That that's the imprint the company's had on you, because you all will be part of the team. So the the person how you would tackle, say, in a reliance, would be very different how your best friend, say, in a data would tackle, right? Or if a friend is in a startup. that it's a very different thing so also another thing i would like to say is um, because you all have excellent risk taking abilities uh, and uh, you know you are going to have lot of opportunities coming up in the startup sector the government is trying its best you know hopefully the ecosystem um, is set up but i would encourage all of you all to also uh, you know work in startups for the simple fact is it's a very good learning environment in the sense because uh, i understand i mean you know there won't be 50 people or you know 1000 people like say you walk into a regular office but the advantage you get is here the learning you have to do is much faster the hoops you have to go through is much faster so whatever opportunity comes you should take it and further on if you want to specialize say in risk and this and that there are uh, gap does this uh, courses gap you would have heard of uh, gap grp so they do uh, all these uh, particular risk management courses and all if you want to you know go down more and more if you want to go deeper and deeper and deeper into you know uh, specialization for that so that's it. thank you thank you so much sir that was really helpful uh, people oriented uh, our next question would be people oriented information in different ways as they want to make efforts and they want to make sense out of it how can we understand the difference while working in the team see uh, this this is this is a classic thing which ha you know happens every day even even right now if i give you a newspaper i'll say what to you is the best story of the day you'll pick a different thing i would pick a different thing right so this is what i said this is why that orientation thing how you orient also decides what you observe it's very very important it's a very important too because how you orient what your orientation is that decides what you look for what is your thing say uh, you know if i'm uh more say uh, if you ask me what's the best thing i'd i'd obviously go to a sports page right so you would look you would probably look at a business page right so the orientation the uh, knowledge assimilation you would have say uh, we ask then after that to um, you know do an outlook on overview on the market economy or something like that so now because your your orientation was more towards this your analysis would be spot on whereas my orientation was more towards sports and then subsequently this so in that way you know your analysis would be more because what had happened is your orientation was perfect for that you were looking for the right information perfectly whereas i did that i spread it you know i went all over the place so that shows in the final outcome okay that's that that was very helpful sir um moving further we have another one while working on a team project you notice that some of your coworkers are falling behind so what would you do to help your team meet the deadline together look uh, uh most of you all will um, uh, see um generally when you do case studies in college uh 
uh, I mean, you all pick your own teams, right? Or are you assigned? assigned no, Jenny, Jenny, when, when you're given a, a case study, does ma'am do it for you? Or, you, you know, you all pick we your assign own? It. We assign it. Sir. We assign it. All right. So the uh, the reason why why I ask this is because see if I, if I tell you you know uh, pick your own team you know your friends right and so you know you know this person is great in this this person is great because you're not friends you know each other but in a workplace environment when you go into an office you may not know everybody's strength so what ma'am is doing is basically by you know put you know picking up the uh, teams for you you are adapting to each other. You're learning from each other and you're adapting. Somebody will be brilliant in presentations. Somebody will be very good in mathematical analysis. So the key is understanding whose strong point is what and feeding it. And it also helps, very important also is, um, you know, I, I, you know, when you'll join new companies, it's, um, it, it's very important understanding the company's culture. You see, because all of them go through training and all of that, and it helps also having good team leaders. I mean, you know, the people who become uh, your mentors, it's very important. That, uh, quite often, you know, when uh, you move from college, like when I moved in from college to, you know, first working, it was very important. I, I you know, uh, I would have been lost if not for a mentor. He said, okay, these are the whole process I've done. So always learn on that. You learn on the job, as they say. And what happens is nobody's a specialist. You know, you're learning here. Tomorrow you might go, you might be sent to a, you'll join a company which uh, uh, does uh, rockets. I mean, you know, none of us are designed for that, but you learn, you understand how they use it and you learn. And then you learn from your elders, you learn from, you know, your mentor. So that is why I also think having a um, mentor, a person who, you know, uh, who guides you properly is also very important. And also keep in touch with each other. The, the advantage of social media is, you know, you reach out to each other, you all know each other, this person say this, this, this. So you pick up all the time. One of the key things I said in UDA is also constantly learning because if you don't learn, you become closed loop. If you, if you stop learning, you go down, right? Because you learn, you understand, say you've joined a rocket company. Now you understand the entire ecosystem, satellite launching ecosystem, this, this, this. And suddenly six months online, you know, Pooja is an expert on space, right? So that's how it is. Okay. Yes, sir. Very well said, sir. Um, next question we have, how to ensure that the decisions made, uh, the decisions that are made may lead to the actions? Please suggest some key points on that. See, uh, decisions, as I said, uh, this deciding and acting in an OODA loop is primarily a leader's, uh, you know, it's, it's the leader's prerogative. That's what I'm talking about when, when it's a big, bigger thing. In individual life, all of us, anyway, as I said, all of us make a decision. You know, when you go into a shop, say when you go into a coffee shop, you know, you go to Starbucks, deciding you do your own mini mental OODA loop, right? About whether you want to have a cappuccino or, you know, whatever you want to have, a smoothie, you know, your own little mental loop you do. Now, how are you, uh, the, as I said, the most important, when, when you work in a team, the orientation where you orient all of that, since everything is interlinked, the quality of the orientation then leads to giving the list of options for decision and acting. That is finally left on the leadership prerogative. It also depends if you have good leadership, they take it forward. Sometimes, you know, there's hesitancy. Sometimes what happens is experience teaches them that maybe let's hold on for a little. little. Sometimes, which, which is right. Sometimes doing nothing is also an action. Please understand, sometimes doing nothing at all, you know, just sit, wait for the storm to tide over is also action, actually. That doesn't mean every time you have to jump, you know, even entire world is jumping, it doesn't mean. So it also depends on that. So decision and action is a leadership prerogative. Your job as a team is to orient all the information, give all the information available, the best possible information to the decision maker and put it up. After that, it is for the person X, or, I mean, he or she to decide. If they don't decide, suppose think uh, you are right. And if they don't, um, you know, they decide and uh, they just sit over it and, you know, your analysis was spot on. Tomorrow, which thing, you, you'll just have a brownie point over. You can say, see, I got it right. That's about it, right? So that's all. Thank you so much, sir. Um, further on, we have how would you deal with the demanding external stakeholder who keeps changing requirements about a specific project you're working on? 
See, uh, this happens all the time. Uh, unfortunately, this is part and parcel of business. Unfortunately, I mean, uh, uh, everything depends on that. That's why I said uh, work culture. How you know each each um, some of you all are lawyers, whatever you know. You might try to you know hold water tight. Um, there's no such thing as a perfect water tight uh, contract. We we would like to think you know there's a perfect water tight contract. But uh, then you realize, you know, the highly paid lawyers who will find a loophole even in that, right? So, but um, generally, the safest decision is all, always to have, uh, you know, on and off, have a line of communication between both. And what happens is also keep a record. Very important. Uh, what we don't realize is, you know, at, at least, I mean, uh, as uh, men, I, I don't don't want to be very generalistic, but record keeping amongst men tends to be slightly. Uh, you know, less focused on, you, you just more focused on the outcome. But having a record trail is very, very, very important. Whatever you do, have a record trail of everything because then, you know, tomorrow if, say, today they asked you to do X, tomorrow they said, no, we meant X plus one, then, you, you know, there is a certain leeway. With all clients that happens, you have to give a little leeway and it's a little give and take. There's no perfect solution for that. So it's, it's part of learning because the experience you'll get, get from one will help you in the next one. So that what will happen is you'll know ki these are the danger signs coming from there. Last time this had happened, this was the danger sign. So the same, so then you will try to avoid it. It's, everything is a learning curve. Thikha? Yes, sir. Absolutely right. Uh, sir, uh, I would like to pass it to pa Yash Pandey. He'll continue with uh, yes, the please. question. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Pooja. So as we're moving forward, the number of questions are also increasing. There's one question where somebody has asked, in games like PUBG, how OODA loop creates and maintains the interest of a, a user till the end? See, I, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not a PUBG user, so I, I really can't uh, think, but I did, I mean, PlayStation, I uh, mm. did. See, all, all, all of these, um, what, what it does is any any game, any PlayStation game, uh, you know, I, I use PlayStation games and all that. So any particular game, it's um, it uh, the reason why, uh, say you and me, if, if we are asked to choose between a game, nine out of 10 times, we'll go for something which is killing, right? It, it's more of a, that's what I said, social thing. It's, 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 it's hardwired into your DNA. Conflict is hardwired into human DNA. Right? Much as we'd like to say, oh, we are peaceful things, peaceful, you know, we are Shanti Priya Lok. But the history of human civilization tells you that, you know, there is this craving for conflict, unfortunately. That doesn't go. Now, each of y'all, even any any particular game, be it, uh, I haven't played PUBG, so I really can't tell you as a uh, user, but I, I can tell you from PlayStation things, any hmm. particular game where you play, you know, any action game, you are mentally doing your OODA loop. Please don't forget. Each, you know, there, there'll be like uh, the enemy, if a sniper bullet is coming or, you know, a shelling is coming or whatever, you instantly take action. You decide, oh, he's here. Let me duck. Let me hide. Let me throw a grenade, whatever. And then, you know, you process. So that is why this this constantly, every little step you take in your, uh, you know, any of these games, you are doing that OODA loop subconsciously. That's why I said quite often you are using uh, the OODA loop without realizing you're using the OODA loop. All OODA loop does is it, brings a formalization to it and it helps you crystallize. That's it. That's what OODA loop does, but you already are using it without realizing. That clearly justifies the question, sir. Thank you. So the next question is, how observation uncertainly affects activities of an organization? I, I'm sorry, can you come again, please? Yes, sir. Uh, the next question is, how observation uncertainty affects activities of any organization? How observation in uncertainty? How observation uncertainty, uncertainty if we are affects not doing activities of any organization. Oh, okay, okay. See, um, as, as I said, um, observation is very critical because what happens is um, every situation you take, you know, uh, either you're overloaded with too much information. So that is why I, what I said is it is very important to have perspective on any particular observation. Now, I'll, I'll just, um, uh, I think you're too young to remember, uh, to know there, was, there used to be this company called Kodak, right? Yes, sir. Uh, which I remember. Make, 
all right uh, they used to make uh, films film roles they were brilliant in what they did okay but what had happened is they became better and better at this but unfortunately they didn't observe the changing marketplace right they didn't observe the digitization of things they were too slow to react and the net result is today it is bankrupt right so it's just a classic thing of when you don't observe your environment as a business you it is very important to look around at the business see changes which are happening because see uh, 20 years down the line the most valuable company and apple may be there may not be there i mean you know when we started working there used to be this phone called blackberry that was the most valuable company then now today you see blackberry it's nobody uses it's all apple now so because it's it's all about keeping in thing in the environment important how you observe how the en- environment impacts your business that is very very important yes yeah, so that was okay so the next question we have is how to identify stuck cuda loops in business operations oh see um, as i said um, in any the advantage of a uh, oda loop is when you have uh, incomplete uh, what do you call um, you know decisions you can instantly go back and start over every time over and over over there's no hard and fast rule that you do it once and this is the be all end all hmm. in oda loop the, the best part of an oda loop is it's endless it can go on endlessly you can do it on and on and on every day you can do one for the same solution you can do it differently because the variables keep on changing all the time every time a variable changes the outcome changes so there's no particular this that you know this oda loop is stuck it may be stuck today but the moment you get a new variable solutions emerge so that's how it works that's why i said an oda loop is very simplistic there's no uh, i mean you know unlike in game theory uh, you know where we say i need to arrive at a nash equilibrium Hmm. and uh, you know when um, the multiple when there are multipliers in a game theory you know it's 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 very different so this is most um, you know easy to use in that way yes yeah, so that you know, that answer was absolutely true uh, we have our next question that says how to tackle future obstacles and make those changes accordingly see a uh, few obstacles i mean you know frankly people uh, like you yash one day would be the ones who will be setting all the trends let's be honest um, it's it's uh, it some genius idea which will come out of from yours or one of your classmates mind you know mm-hmm. something something which you're convinced in but all always remember uh, you know when you have that uh, you know that million dollar idea i mean all of us think oh ho jayega but when you have something and when you run it through run it through a couple of loops and then you know the more you're convinced and this and that reach out to your ecosystem what did i mention there was this particular thing of uh, the second law of thermodynamics where you have to interact with the environment that is very important why is it important is because what happens is when you use uh, things as a sounding board then you understand uh, market may idea hai nahi hai is there any competitor is anybody else also thinking on this line number one number two then what happens is when you bounce ideas you fine tune your ideas right it, it's it's like you know uh, it's it's not like bhagavad gita ke bhagwan ji ne bataya and no it's it's right it we come across because we bounce ideas we bounce ideas say you have a better idea than me you know and then i was like oh yeah what you said is brilliant you know that's a good idea so that's how you interact when when you interact this is how it helps so then you set up you set up the business for tomorrow as i said see uh everybody uh, you know you all probably know a lot about mark zuckerberg and all you know since he's uh, the the person who started apple was uh, steve jobs yes sir okay now steve jobs was a happy yeah it's true it's true he had come to india he was a happy probably and i think he got booted some as a bichara and then he went back whatever so but the rest as they say is history if maybe if steve jobs would have found nirvana and you know he would have decided na that's it i this is my purpose in life you know and we would have never got an apple right so he came he he roamed around india and uh, then after that he went back and um, that's it and the rest he he had that curiosity in his head he was he was he was known as a very tough taskmaster was very thing but 
he had a brilliance of uh, that brilliant idea about him that edge but why did he prosper because that ecosystem was there okay. so that is why so nothing happens you know uh, in unison there is that ecosystem and it's you and your friends that will be building the ecosystem it's helping each other out helping you know each other out and that's how you grow so very important when when you all go into business also tomorrow say you all if if you decide to uh, join any corporate world and all you will have your own friend circle there you learn from people in the office plus you will also learn from you know you'll stay in touch with your friends from college also this always learning they'll tell you are this is a great thing you know you know this this and that's how the ideas come uh thank you sir uh, i think i few more questions are there yes pooja do you have yes ma'am um so uh, this this question which came up in game addiction uh, is related to ooda loop sorry i, like, I just lost you know, the game addiction a... which is you sh- sorry okay. uh, i'll repeat it again yes please yeah in game addiction uh, is is game addiction related to ooda loop no no see any addiction is see uh, what is ooda loop ooda loop is about deciding and acting right da what you're doing is you you're doing the oo part and you're not doing the da part game addiction is not related to the ooda loop you're not think, deciding and acting deciding and acting is why you, you know your orientation tells you bahut zyada addiction ho gaya you know game ke liye let me decide deciding and acting is okay let me be off the game for a few days right so that way you're not executing the entire yeah. cycle as i said dna is leadership positions it's where decision making happens it's why you take a step as a leader observation and orientation is why you come towards a step but dna unless you complete the step the addiction thing continues that's what okay so one last question we have uh, which decision making model influences most of uh, most of nowadays uh for a gaming game playing see the uh, model influences most of now a days which look um as i said there are multiple the multiple tools right when you go into a larger game when you go into a corporate world i mean when you want to play at that uh, you know strategic level uh game theory comes in right each each one there are different different things but one particular the advantage of what an uda does is you know it it simplifies things for you even even for game theory please understand the variables you need to have clarity on the strategy variables this there has to be clarity uda live loop is a simple tool which gives you clarity in everything right so that is why any uh, especially see uh, you all want to go into i mean if tomorrow you all become entrepreneurs and you know you want to go into uh, gaming or whatever whatever you decide in the key what is the objective of any gaming thing it is to get people addicted i mean hooked on to your game they think that you know this is the best thing i am you know forget everything else this is the best thing so in that way yes you how do you come across that you do everything in observation observation is you see what what people like what is the market like what are most of the kids playing then you orient your strategy according to that you add what new elements you know that sort of thing to entice more people to play your game so that's the objective that's what i said oh oh and this orientation decides everything this feeds into everything else right <clears throat> Yes, sir. That was really helpful. Yes. Uh, sir, I, question. Thank you, Pooja. Sir, I have another question for you. So may I? Yeah, please, please, yes, please. Yes, sir. So the question is: Describe a time you made an unpopular decision. How did you handle the feedback? How would you have handled the situation differently? See, uh, describe a time you made. Uh, in in the uh, previous office no that <laughs> that comes under the national security act so no but uh, okay, so. I'll, i'll just give you a basic example quite mm-hmm. often what happens is as i said every, every decision you know you can give x amount of decisions to the um, it, it's all a collective decision making but ultimately the decision and the ability to own a decision is very important in leadership 
right so you can you you might think this is the best possible solution you have given whatever but when you understand when it goes to leadership please understand there are multiple variables also and the onus of the decision is on them you're just a small cog in the system hmm. when the prime minister puts out something he has to own it it has to be perfect i mean in the sense perfect as as close to perfect as possible because the entire failure or the success falls on him right now in in the corporate world like when i when i started as i said there was a reason why i mentioned it's very important having good mentors because when you are new there are lots of things you want to do there is this uh, all uh, you know each office has its own hierarchy each office has its own setup you know there are bureaucracy so when you have a good mentor uh, always remember it helps because they help you navigate all this so they amount the amount rather than learning through trial and error the less trial and error so you have a better you know a smoother passage so whenever you all join wherever i mean just see how speak with people there on what the work culture is right and uh, as i said uh, uh, you know you're like young people and it's there's no harm in going for entre- you know uh, startups and all because in startups you have more responsibility you have much much more responsibility than you would do in a normal office in a normal office you'd have one particular desk one particular function that's it but in a startup you have to do five different things unfortunately that's more stressful but it's useful also for you you learn faster but anyway i'm 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 not saying thing any office you go to there's always something to learn any any business anything there's always something to learn right for sure sir for sure uh, there's another question sir describe a time when you had to make an immediate decision on an, on a critical issue was there any time such um was there yes in the energy i mean this this was uh, way back in uh, london when uh, there was this particular crisis in nigeria which which uh, luckily it, it it all worked out fine the hijack thing happening of uh, a particular nigeria there is uh, of the of the coast of nigeria there is uh, ransom they regularly there's piracy actually what they do is they come up and hijack your tankers and this and that and uh, it so happened that uh, the senior i was reporting to unfortunately was on leave that day so it it, it all worked out smoothly because generally what happens is companies have these uh, things in place and it, it just was assorted uh, luckily <coughs> thank you okay, so sir. much sir thank you sir sir i would now like to call our teacher dr sunita singhal ma'am to uh, to put the vote of thanks thank you yes thank you sir thank you i i express my, our, all of us are expressing our profound and most sincere thanks to you for honoring us with your presence and uh, this today's uh, webinar is useful for all of us being a student be, whether we are student of management or uh, journalism because nowadays we are talking about startup and e entrepreneurship everywhere Yes. So with this web webinar, we 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 all understand that world is changing very fast, and the rep- uh, and uh, future is unpredictable as well. The person who will respond quickest will uh, win the game. Yes. We all talk about vision. That vision is important. But you re- made us realize that we should have vision, but we should not have tunnel vision. Yes. We should uh, keep uh, uh, thinking about all the things which are going in our surrounding. speed is the essence of success in nowadays and most of the time we will be having fog of war we will having uh, confusion we will not yes. having clear pictures so we uh, we need to think over our orientation we make ourselves clear what we want to see and we have to respond fastly the most the more quicker we will be the more the game will be ours so thank you very much sir really this session was very helpful to all of you thank you thank you. Pleasure. thank you so much sir and thank i you. hope next time we will be doing it offline <laughs> thank you thank you thank you so much thank, thank you so much sir thanks thank you thank you thank you so thank you